to another episode of the Alter Your Health podcast, live edition, of course, your source of information and inspiration to promote the holistic transformation of your health and the health of our planet. I'm your host, Dr. Benjamin Alter. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'm Dr. Susanna Alter, here to join Benjamin today. Susanna is the official long-term guest slash slash co-host for the live sessions That's right. as you may as you may know at this point so this is another exciting episode and we are building upon the foundation on which we created in the last two episodes and we're talking about the foundation of health kind of the nuts and bolts of how to build a healthy life and maintain a healthy body through this crazy life that we have given, been, been given to live. So, taking it a step further, we have already covered food, air, water in the first kind of live episode. Last week, Susanna covered thoughts, which is a huge topic, covered wonderfully. Today, we're going deeper, broader, more in-depth, into the realm of relationships, which is a huge, huge topic. Um, obviously, we're just gonna kinda fly by, bird's eye view, kind of overview of what we mean by relationships and how relationships can, in fact, influence health and well being. I think that, I mean, when I, when I say that to you, Susanna, what do you feel or how do you make the connection between? relationships and health well <clears throat> I guess I'll start by saying relationships can be wonderfully supportive to our health if you're in a healthy loving relationship having having a companion or a family around is wonderful for supporting your overall health however additionally I think what we're going to talk a little bit more deeply about today is how relationships can actually be an opportunity for immense growth and uh, personal kind of evolution. And um, mm -hmm. so what, what do I mean by that? <laughs> well, we're, we're going to get right into that. And, you know, to just point out the obvious, um, you know, relationships are obviously, like Susanna said, a source of love and also potentially a source of stress, right? And we all pretty much well, well know at this point what those sort of emotions can do to our physiology. Love obviously floods the body with all sorts of beneficial hormones and all sorts of goodies like that. And stress, you know, similarly, flooding the body with different hormones. And the results are decreased immunity and sleep disturbance and weight gain and chronic disease and pretty much anything at this point can be connected to stress as being kind of an underlying cause. So relationships may be a source of stress. If you have, if you agree, could you maybe comment or wave or give a thumbs up if you have a connection with relationships as either being a source of love or a source of, or, or a source of stress? I'm sure that people can obviously relate to this. Another thing that I want to touch upon is that Beyond relationships being a source of love or stress, the lack of relationship and the feeling of isolation and the feeling of disconnection is also an even more significant stress to the body. And a lot of, you know, a lot of studies have shown that that stress has been connected with a number of, you know, acute and chronic conditions, physical conditions, as well, of, of, of course, mental health conditions. But isolation and loneliness is definitely more, in my mind, an epidemic when we're talking about mental health and physical health because a feeling of loneliness is very much connected with premature death, it turns out, which is obviously something we're trying to avoid in this life. And it's hard to feel lonely and connected. And, you know, those are kind of, obviously opposites in a lot of ways so loneliness and isolation is also a feeling that we're trying to 
avoid but also acknowledge that it, it's a real thing that exists. So um, I want to dive into this concept, this philosophy that, that I know uh, Dr. Susanna and I share in our life, in our world. And this philosophy is that relationships, or let's start before we got, before even going into the relationship topic, we're, we're going to talk about earth being a school. You know, this life that we have, it's like classes. We're going to class. We're in this school. Mm -hmm. And as human beings, we're not, we're not just human beings living a spiritual, um, or human beings having spiritual experiences here and there, but we're actually divine spiritual beings having a human experience. Yeah. And so, uh, the, the idea, the theory is that where were these divine beings coming to earth to learn really valuable lessons? Yes. And it turns out that pretty much all of our teachers in earth school here as divine beings, all of our teachers are our relationships. They're our friends. They're our family. They're our relationships that we both choose and they're relationships that are chosen for us. All of these relationships are teachers. And they're all providing lessons and opportunities to learn and grow and heal and come into a more sense of wholeness and integrated self-awareness of who we are as divine beings having this human experience. And to me, it's, it's really hard to be fully, vibrantly thriving and healthy without that connection with ourselves as divine beings having a human experience. So... I want to share a little bit about some, about one of my most um, challenging teachers. She was a teacher that kind of really woke me up to this in a in a powerful way, and I just want to you know briefly share this story. Essentially, I had a long pattern of feeling rejected. I had been um, had a number of girlfriends throughout high school and college, and they were all you know. They are all were what they were and kind of teaching me things. But one of the main lessons, the, one of the main threads that wove through, through them all was this, um, this lesson of rejection. I found myself feeling rejected and turned down. And, you know, I was always the subject of the breakup. I, had, I would never initiate the breakup. I was always being broken up with, which, you know, it was, it was challenging, but I kind of just became immune to it. And in college, toward the end of college, I had a really, you know, strong, soulful connection with one, one lady, one woman. And we had just a really wonderful relationship that, that, was powerful in a number of ways and, and we just came in and out of each other's life and I felt <laughs> I felt rejected again and again also again and and yet she would open up and you know welcome me back into her life and we we just had this really interesting exchange and it it ended up it it left me feeling just rejected rock bottom after she left for, I don't know, a fourth or fifth time. And I just had this, in that depth of sadness and kind of grief and just isolation that I was talking about before, I had this real epiphany that I was everything that I wanted and needed from a lover. And I know that this sounds like kind of strange and hard to wrap your mind around, but this idea that we all have the love, we all have the compassion, we all have the connection that we are seeking through another, we all have that within ourselves. And I had that conceptually understood at that point, but, at, but after that real deep space of grief and disconnection, I reconnected and re-experienced that sense of self at a much more real, palpable place. So essentially, this teacher, this relationship, really was one of, 
you know, I, I would call her for sure a soulmate in the sense that she was able to teach me and show me myself, unlike anyone had done before then. And then, you know, interestingly, ironically, synchronistically, after I had reconnected with myself and and regained this connection with my own inherent worth and divine worth and sense of self, I was totally happy, at peace, and, dis and, and unattached from ever having anyone else validate who I was and my worth in this world. And, you know, just a few months down the road, Susanna here enters my life showing me exactly what I was kind of seeking and looking for all along. She was kind of the perfect, you know, entry in my life to reflect my inherent self-worth right back at me. Da, da, da. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Susanna to save the day. Um, so, you know, the, the message, the moral of this story is we all have, you know, these relationships that we choose and that are chosen for us, and they're all lessons and opportunities. But when it comes down to it, they're all pointing back inward. Every, ref every relationship is a reflection of how we are, where we are with ourselves in any given moment. So if we can honestly approach each and every relationship from that perspective, then we are guided to connect with ourselves and strengthen the most sacred divine relationship that we will ever have. And that is the relationship with ourself. Wow. Well, thanks for sharing that story, Ben. Yeah. And I, I actually have a clarifying question. Which is, um, so you said, you said throughout this relationship with this coming and going of this woman in your life, she, she taught you, she showed you yourself. Were those your words? She showed you yourself. And in that, are you meaning that she, that in s spending time with her, you were able to feel the love that, like the love that you are? Is okay. that kind of... For sure. I think that that is a common experience that we have in any sort of loving relationship because the love that we experience in relationship to another is actually the love that we have reflected back to us, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, when we're in a, and, and when we're in a powerful, soulful, loving relationship, that individual is able to clearly reflect exactly what you are. So, is that so, answering yeah. your question? Yeah, yeah, and it sounds like this kind of cycle of rejection you found yourself in um, was coming from within, kind of a self-rejection of yourself. Is that correct? Like, yeah. Feeling like, well, feeling like you needed that other individual to feel the love, and when she was gone, that exactly. love was not. Exactly. It was not available for you to feel. Exactly. I conceptually knew that I was a loving and worthy and lovable individual. I conceptually knew that I had that inside of me, but I still was, as I phrase it, I was still addicted to somebody showing that to me and someone being there to acknowledge it and validate it. I didn't have as much of an experiential knowing of it so I was reliant upon another individual showing that for me. And as, and you know, life is full, of, I like to say that life is full of all of these paradoxes. And as much as we are relying on outward validation in that sort of way, there will never be outward validation. But once, as I talked about, once I disconnected and unattached from ever needed that outer validation of my inherent self-worth, then with the graceful, miraculous, universal, divine, orchestrated miracle, you know, that sort of everything that I seek, everything that I was seeking, I find as long as soon as I surrender the, the hunt, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, that's kind of where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. So... Um, do you want to share a brief example of a teacher in your world, Susanna? I'll share a very brief 
um, okay. example because here we're talking a lot about romantic relationships, but yeah. every person you encounter uh, has you know the potential to be a great teacher. And uh, when I was working in the student clinic at our naturopathic college, I had a patient who um, was really sweet to me in the beginning of the appointment, and then at some point in the middle of the appointment, just like a flip switching, I perceived him being the rudest, most um, short and offensive patient, that person that I've ever been in the room with. And um, in that moment, I really perceived him as like, oh my gosh, he's really unhappy with me. I must have done something that made him this upset. Um, it's all my fault, putting the blame on me and thinking that there's something wrong that I'm doing or something that I'm lacking to cause him to just flip a switch like this. And then um, later on, after some reflection, I, I came to the realization that, you know, his self-expression of anger or what whatever he's expressing really is his own agenda. It's his own stuff and it, it has nothing to do with or without me and so he was really a teacher that taught me how to not take things so personally and um, I found from that moment on whenever I was in the room with a patient that became upset about something I was able to just sit there with them and acknowledge their upset and and realize that it, it had nothing to do about me and so um so that's a little short example um Great. but you know i i feel like we should talk about we talk about how like oh and then i had this realization that mm -hmm. i you know it had nothing to do about me or for you it was like that i am a completely worthy being of love and and yeah. how do we get to how do we come to these realizations through these relationships well I don't really have a clear, discrete, concrete answer to that, but I know that I know there is a couple key ingredients and key points that might support such realization. One of which is intention, is having a clear intention to have an insight, right? <laughs> like maybe maybe that intention is formed in a prayer. I don't know. Maybe it's just that like surrender like show me show me something i'm you know sometimes it's in a moment of desperation another thing is just grace you know mm -hmm. it's just the divine timing you know everything shows up the teacher shows up when the student is ready right mm -hmm. so the insights show up when we're in a place where we can comprehend them see them and integrate them back into our life and I think, I think another big piece of it is what we talked about last week is thoughts and being in a place where you can, um, where you can step back and observe what happened from a different perspective and, and just allow space for other, uh, other thoughts and insights to, to yeah. come, to come yeah. in. Yeah. So I want to take a little, a little moment and if we can kind of shift towards another type of relationship just briefly acknowledge that unhealthy relationships exist in the world and they are often a source like we kind of started this conversation very often a source of stress and dis-ease mentally emotionally spiritually physically and those relationships i you know we can call them toxic relationships they're just the energy is toxic despite how how clear and direct and loving the intention is to have a, a meaningful authentic connection sometimes two souls come together in this world and maybe maybe it's a friend maybe it's a romantic partner but sometimes these souls serve one another for some period of time and then comes a moment a time where the relationship is just over it's not there's no no more serving no more learning the learning has has happened and sometimes you know you just gotta like acknowledge that 
it's time to part ways. It's time to honor oneself by choosing out of a relationship. And that doesn't mean that you're weak. It doesn't mean that you gave up. It means that you're choosing yourself and you're choosing to acknowledge or you're choosing to put yourself in your, you know, you, how you're, to prioritize yeah, yourself. you're prioritizing yourself <laughs> rather than, you know, trying to please another in a relationship. So just wanted to make it clear that not all relationships are, you know, sometimes there's unhealthy patterns, right? And we want to do our best to transcend them within our own power while also acknowledging and respecting where we are. Certainly. Yeah. 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 Um, let's see here. I think, I think also just to kind of piggyback off of what you're saying, um, what, what's so important in all of these relationships with other human beings is your relationship with yourself. Yeah. And it really is, we always say this, it's the very most important relationship in your life. Yeah. As, I, as we kind of have touched upon, each relationship that we have with other people is simply a reflection of where we are and how we are with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when it comes down to it, that's what matters most. And of course, we might have a family, we might have loved ones that rely on us that depend on us but i mean it, it it doesn't get old you know the the cliche remains that you can't you know show up for someone else if you're not showing up for yourself so making sure that you have the undivided attention that you have your own undivided attention focused on yourself regularly is really really important like, mm -hmm. like we can't overstate the importance of that mm -hmm. and that's i mean if you it, it's just crazy to think about back to the idea of health right and thriving in this world it's just crazy to consider trying to be healthy and thrive without having a really solid foundation of a nurturing loving relationship with oneself it's like a lot of we're kind of led to you know buy a supplement for a symptom <laughs> or something <laughs> like that but when it comes down to it let's just go a little deeper and take a few minutes to nurture the most sacred relationship that we have in this world mm -hmm. yeah yeah beautifully said well um you know i think we could certainly <laughs> go on and on and on mm -hmm. and dive deeper and deeper but just to kind of wrap things up and and uh, package up some takeaways um, the first is simply knowing that our health and well-being is very much dependent on the health and well-being of the relationships that we have in our life and those relationships once again some of which we choose and some of which are chosen our, our family they're chosen for us and those are often the the relationships where there's the richest learning right because they are kind of setting the stage creating the foundation through which all of this learning happens mm -hmm. yeah. we talked about how everyone who enters enters your life has the opportunity to be a powerful teacher whether they are a romantic partner or just someone you spend a couple of hours with um, or a few minutes with yeah. for that matter and some of these relationships are quote unquote toxic and sometimes we just have to cut the cord and and prioritize ourself and our own well-being and that's not a bad thing or negative thing it's a self-honoring self-loving thing it's it's an so you know an act of love doing that sort of thing yeah and i, th I think that was it yeah. Yeah. Um, kind of the, the, yeah, the last thing that I want to say is just that the intention is to allow all of these relationships, the good, the bad, the ugly, the hard, and the loving and the stressful, allow them all to just point you back toward yourself and keep you on track um, towards your 
discovery of your inherent wholeness, your divine perfection. And I think that will take you a long way. So, with that said, with that said, um, we're gonna go and love ourselves. Yay! So, hope you guys have some <laughs> self-loving plans for the rest of the day. And thanks for thanks again for joining us for this brief episode of Alter Your Health Live. Next week we talk about food, the topic you've all been waiting for. Oh my gosh, <laughs> we're going into food with Dr. Susanna, one of our favorites. So we look forward to it. And uh, feel free to check out the website for more information, alter.health. Um, this will be on alter.health slash podcast. And then we've got a new relationship post on alter.health slash blog. Really good article. Give it a read. Give it a read. Um, you know, if you're on Facebook, subscribe and like and all that stuff. If you're on Instagram, be sure to stay tuned. Also on YouTube. And um, we love you wherever you're tuning in from. If you're on iTunes, subscribe, rate, review, all that good stuff. And we are forever grateful. Until next time. Peace and love. Bye.